The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 50 Market It was readily apparent when Maple and Starlight reached River Falls Market. The glass flooring resumed, but the crowd was so thick it was barely visible. They walked under a wooden archway, taking great care to stick together as the tide of ponies ebbed and flowed, and into an open pavilion with a great many booths lining the fronts of houses. A forest of stakes spoked high up from the ground, undoubtedly supports to use for setting up cover when the weather wasn't dry. Starlight hopped on to Maple's back for no other reason than to avoid being trampled and looked around alertly. It was too busy for any individual ponies to pay attention to her, but she couldn't relax amid the noise the rainbow sea of mares was making. Shouts rang out, everything from haggling to friendly conversation as they pressed forward, accidentally knocking against more than one pony in the chaos. Maple offered an apology every time she did so, but was likely never heard. She studied the banners above the merchandise booths with interest. Unable to ask questions amid the din, she tried to deduce them herself and quickly noticed a pattern. There seemed to be a deliberate divide between locations providing raw goods, such as food or building material, and ones offering services and artistic things. Maple approached one of the good stalls, evidently selling produce. A spring green mare with a bright yellow mane who looked to be in her late teens sat behind the store window and instantly perked up when they stopped in front of her. Hi, she chirped. What can I get for you? We're just here for corn, Maple answered with a smile. I think ten years should do it. Whoa! The corn mare smirked happily back at her. Planning a feast, huh? Well, here you go. She bundled together the requested ears of corn, tied them off with a string, and hoofed them over the counter to Maple. Have a super day and come back if you need more, okay? Turning away with a wave and a shout of thanks, Maple took her bundle and dove back into the crowd, swimming through mares until eventually stumbling into an alcove free enough to hear herself speak. Well, Starlight, she asked, we've got what we came for, but we did just get here. Want to do anything else before we leave? See what some other stores have to offer, maybe? I don't know, Starlight answered with a note of tension. Her own feelings on how ponies treated each other aside, that many bodies in that little space was enough to put anyone on edge. Maple tapped the ground, evidently thinking. We could go get ice cream, she offered. I bet the line is long today, but it's worth it. They usually have 15 different flavors. As long as Starlight stayed above the crowd, she didn't mind relenting. Ice cream did sound good, after all. Okay, she said with a shrug. Sure, ice cream. Hee <laughs> hee, Maple giggled, not quite bouncing back into the crowd. Starlight slumped against her warm back as she progressed, mildly noting that Maple seemed very good at making herself a path without getting shoved around too much in turn. They did get jostled, but she never really felt it. It was almost like her bride had armor. Even though it was probably all skill, Starlight briefly let her mind wander, imagining Maple as a big tan tank bulldozing her way through a mosh pit. It felt nice, imagining her to be strong and useful. She wasn't quite sure why, since it probably amounted to treating her better than the other ponies in the crowd, but no one would mind her fancy if they couldn't see it. Or... Could they? Starlight suddenly became aware of a mare several pony lengths away who was somehow managing to keep eye contact through the crowd, lips pursed in recognition. Starlight didn't recognize her, but apparently that didn't go both ways. Hey! Hey, everyone! Look! The mare screamed, hopping up and down excitedly. It's that filly! The one with the really impressive magic that makes her better than everyone else! The crowd froze, somehow all turning to Starlight. The one from Equestria? Another piped up. Yes, her! Someone lunged at Starlight, trying to knock her off Maple's back. She's amazing! We should give her a scholarship and send her off to Iron Ridge! Starlight's lips split in a snarl, her horn lighting, when someone tapped her on the shoulder. Starlight? Maple's voice asked. What flavor do you want? She sat bolt upright and shook her head, blinking. 
The crowd was minding its own business, a sea of colorful ponies milling around as aimlessly as ever. She was still on Maple's back. The only ponies looking at her were her ride and the attendant at their present stall, who seemed to be waiting on her for an order. Uh, she mumbled, disconcerted. I'm having mango, Maple offered. It's really good. They make it right here, fresh. Okay, Starlight said hollowly, still clearing her head. I'll have that too. Starlight? Maple asked as the mayor at the counter filled their order. Are you okay? Just a daydream, Starlight grumbled unhappily, shifting round and settling back into a comfortable position. Hmm, I'm all right. Here you go, the shopkeeper chirped, holding out two chilly yellow treats. They were frozen around short loops of string in such a way that a pony could suspend them from one hoof, eating without needing to stop walking. Next! Starlight didn't have that issue, taking both in her telekinesis and holding Maples up for her. Thanks, Maple hummed appreciatively, taking a few experimental legs before shivering with pleasure. Just as good as they always are. Starlight, you should try yours. As they walked in search of a less crowded part of town, Starlight did so. She had to agree with Maple. The mango was good, almost overwhelmingly sweet and fruity, but only almost, and that made all the difference. Hers was nearly gone by the time the crowd broke. Maple, stepping into a narrow alley that no pony seemed to be using, finally able to talk and be heard without raising her voice. Well, is there anything else you want to do? She asked. We can go to a less busy part of town. Sliding down from her back, Starlight steadied herself as her hooves made contact with the glass roadway. I don't know, she said with a shrug. Um, she looked around. What is there to do? Well, we could go visit Willow, Maple suggested. We could try to track down Amber, but that might be hard. We could also go look for Gerardo, if you'd like to meet him. We probably shouldn't visit the bathhouse, though, because I bet they'll be busy. She closed her eyes and inhaled, evidently thinking. I could show you the riverbank where we found you. We could also visit Erenby. He might know something about why your magic is feeling better, but we have been there an awful lot lately. Visiting Willow sounds nice, Starlight offered. She didn't mention that she felt a slight twinge after carrying the ice cream in her telekinesis for several minutes. As restful as the previous night had been, there were no supernatural horn fatigue cures involved. We'll do that then. Mind made up, Maple oriented herself and set off toward her friend's house, Starlight scurrying along behind. End of chapter 50